Mr. Shu Kegel. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. Awesome. So uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about four students we had here, Nancy, Kathy, Grace, and Colin. Now, uh, this was their first experience to America, um, Just, and this is the first time you've actually had uh, students from Korea, correct? I've actually had uh, two other boys a couple years ago. Okay. And when they came, they came for a little longer time. I, I believe it was eight weeks. And comparing when they came, they were in seventh grade as well. During that uh, visit, they were a little more reclusive and they didn't speak as, as much English and uh, they did fine they were very polite and things went well but certainly when when the four students you know Colin and Grace and Nancy and Kathy came over here they warmed up to our our culture very quickly our, our students took them in right away and uh, almost immediately they became part of our family and that was great to see and even though they were only here for four weeks, it felt like a lot longer. Yeah, that's in great. a good way. Awesome. So making friends wasn't hard for them at all. You saw them interacting with the students right away, or I think it helped that um, Colin and Grace, who were by themselves in the classroom, uh, they didn't have any other Korean students with them, so they had to interact with the uh, with the kids at our school right away. Nancy and Kathy, I think, because they were in the same classroom, maybe it took them a little longer. Maybe that's just the personality of, of being girls at that age level, but Miss um, Krause put them in different parts of the room, and the kids right away just wanted to interact with them and talk with them and learn some different words. And I've, I've heard from all three teachers that they things went great. And, um, the kids loved them, and, and they really interacted well and caught it quickly. We try to get them involved in, in recess and in the classroom setting as much as possible and I think that really helped. Yeah. Can you a little elaborate a little bit about what you guys did for the kids to get them uh, involved maybe in sports? In sports, uh, we have recess times during our, our school day and we have different teams that they play different sports throughout the year and when they came uh, we were in the middle of a broom ball where they they go back and forth. It's sort of like hockey, and they hit the ball. Uh, so they got they got put on a team, and they got to interact with other kids and kind of bump around and and hit the ball. So that was great. And then we went into badminton, and from what I was told, they're they're somewhat familiar with badminton already. And and so they got placed on different teams yet, and they got to be part of a team and different kids and um, try to do their best to to win for the team. So that. That certainly helped. Uh, during lunch hour, when there was sort of free seating, they would sit. Other kids would want to sit with them, and they would want to sit with other kids, and so they got to personally interact with a number of students then, um, and in the classroom too. I mean, the kids, especially right next to them, who would like to help them out if they got stuck in a problem or didn't know what page we were on, they were right there to help them. So that was the benefit. Awesome. And even so, I heard you guys had league sports like mid-season like basketball. We were yeah. really impressed that you guys got the kids in the ball so fast. Right. They wanted to become part of the intramural bas uh, interscholastic basketball teams. So they got some playing time. They got to practice and uh, participate with the team, the team that goes out and plays other schools. And I know uh, Colin for sure got some playing time. I don't believe Nancy or Kathy got physically in the game, but at least they got to suit up and feel like they were part of a team that went out to play other schools. That was a great addition as well. Yeah, I mean, for coming in mid-season and like, even Colin for having one week of practice, less than a week of practice and being able to play in the game, right. I'm very impressed and happy. Yeah, he did great, and, and the coaches and the players gave him great opportunities to at least get out there and get a feel for the game. Yeah, and the kids took to him pretty well, right? They loved it. They uh, they certainly wanted him to succeed, and they in the games they tried to pass the ball right to him so he can get a shot off, and he almost made a basket. He hit the front of the rim, I believe, and um, yeah, they wanted him to to at least feel what it's like to to be on the court and have all the fans cheering for you, awesome. and they certainly cheered for him, and um, that was great to see.
Yeah, I love to see the camaraderie, you know, when we uh, partner with you with Holy Cross here, we've noticed that it really does feel like a family, and we appreciate that. And not just, you know, having fun and getting along with everyone here, but also academically, our students were challenged here. They were challenged, but they, they took to it pretty well. How do you feel like, from the time that they came in to when they left, what were some challenges coming in, and how, how, what did you observe? <clears throat> First hand for, for Colin personally, because he was in my classroom and I taught him the most, it's difficult for any student to come in mid-year and to try to jump into the middle of a textbook and to pick up where all the other kids have been throughout the year. But, um, you know, Colin wanted to find out um, how we do things and he, he jumped right in. I know the kids helped him too, but uh, he, was, he read very well. Um, I could see the progress in his reading and the confidence in, in his reading in, in school. He certainly, uh, there are some words that he had challenges with, but that's understandable. He took his time and I could tell he, he really focused and wanted to, to do his best. And um, I taught Kathy and Nancy in catechism class and, and I know they, they uh, probably had to, to jump into a catechism class, which is a religion class um, on the teachings of the Bible, they probably weren't as familiar with that as much either. And even with, with Colin, we're studying American history now. I mean, American history to Koreans probably is pretty foreign to them. Yeah. But they, they all were willing to learn, and I, know I heard Grace from the, uh, the teacher that she had, Mrs. Morozik. Grace was even actually showing the kids some things that she did in math class and other classes that impressed the kids down there. So I think there was a lot of sharing. They would share ideas with us and we would share ideas and, and um, experiences with them and it was a great two-way street. Nice. So in some facets like English where it's not their native language, um, our students from Korea, they, uh, they had a lot of room for improvement to grow, but other subjects like math and um, they came in actually pretty well prepared, right? Yes, very well prepared, and we were all the teachers were very impressed with the level that they were at when they arrived at our school. Like I said, we've had other other students come in um, from other public schools in in the state, and usually the kids who come in from other schools are at a much lower level, and it's tough to get them to, to be caught up. Mm. Colin, Nancy, Kathy, and Grace all came in. Um, at or above the level that we expected them to be. So there was really no tough transition at all. Wonderful. That's excellent. And uh, I guess as far as, you know, the improvement that you saw, um, reading, speaking, and just confidence, uh, how would you say for the students that you had in the grades there, what, what did you observe there as far as the, from when they first came to when they finished? What kind of improvement did you really notice? There's always a certain level of comfortability. When, when kids come in, and there's, there's new students, new teacher, new, na new country that they're in. There's a lot on their shoulders, but I think they handle it so well. And, and just the confidence of knowing that the kids, who they are personally, made it much more comfortable for them in the classroom. If you're in a, in a classroom with 50 kids and nobody talks with you, they're not going to gain that confidence. But we have lower classroom sizes, and the students, when they come in, uh, they became friends with them so quickly and the teachers were really open to them that the learning process happened much better and it was a much more comfortable environment for them. So in that regard, you know, we could see quite a bit of improvements across the board and, and like you said, the confidence level really makes a difference. And now it's just in like four weeks, right? Four or five right. weeks. Would you say, uh, how would you think they would fare off if they were here for a year? If they were here for a year, um, that's a great question. I Probably if they came at the beginning of the year, that would be much easier for them. Um, obviously, uh, they could start where all the other kids are starting, um, grow with them, and share all the experiences. I know we could only let them share some of the experiences that we have here in a small time frame of our school year, but yeah, a whole year would be, that would be very interesting to try out. Yeah. We would certainly love it, but um, we're happy with what we get. Absolutely. So, 
is is cool that you saw improvement in four or five weeks. Do you think the kids would benefit much more by you know staying here for a longer term? Oh, definitely. Um, you can only get so much in four weeks, and and I know we packed a lot in, and I know you you shared a lot of experiences with them as well. But um, for any child to come into a, a school setting just for a short amount of time, there's only so much you can get. I think a whole year would be fantastic and um, a great blessing and a benefit for everyone. Awesome. And now, I know our students from Korea, they, they grew a lot. They uh, understand American culture a little better. They are more comfortable conversing and you know, academically they're achieving more. Mm -hmm. Now, American students, how do you feel that they benefit from, you know, seeing a new culture? Seeing a new culture is, it's a great connection because we study different countries in our geography studies and we, we talk about different lands and different people. And it's just a picture here and a, and a sentence there, but to actually get to meet them and to know that, hey, you know, they share a lot of the same music and, and uh, interests as uh, children across, halfway across the world, is a great connection. And when they realized that, I mean, Colin was just like them, and uh, Nancy and Grace and Kathy were were on their same level, and they they smiled like them, and they you could tell that. I would say another aspect is all four of them were seemed so happy as well, and to see that the smile that they had and and the joy, they they know that. Um, it brings the world much closer and much more uh, together and I think uh, to see that inter interconnection is amazing. Um, you know, two worlds apart coming together and clicking just like that. I wish the whole world could, could see that. Join hands. Um, I guess that students want to, parents really want to see their students, you know, achieve more in the world it's it's a competitive world out there right now and a lot of parents want the best for their students do you feel um, in your experience that a study abroad program going abroad whether it's American students going to Korea or Korean students coming here really helps set that student up for success in the future of their careers and their endeavors oh a hundred percent I I think to get that knowledge and, the, and that, that base and to know what other children are learning and and setting goals too. I mean, if if they could come over here and see what what we're doing, and if we could send some kids over there and see what what their level at, I think that would be probably more of a shock. I, sometimes I think our our uh, our environment around America is that some of the kids don't try as hard, and um, sometimes we're a little embarrassed about the lack of effort. And and I think Nancy, Grace, Kathy, and and Colin set a great example for our kids to see how well they wrote, how well they tried in school, um, how nice they were, how pleasant they were to be around. Uh, it gave a great taste in the mouths of, of all the kids and the parents because they look at them and say, they're, they're a fine example and maybe, I think they even raised the bar in our school higher because we looked at, at what they could achieve and what they got done in four weeks and we think, um, you know, we could even do better than uh, maybe what we're doing so far. So their their attitude and their work ethic rubbed off on us, and hopefully some of the good qualities that we have went back with them too. Do you feel if we were ever to send American students over to Korea that their eyes would open and they'd actually want to perform better themselves academically in their careers? I think careers? so, sure. Um, you can always, you look at the bar and you think, well, I can, I can, get close to the bar and just do what everyone else is doing, but when that bar is raised in other schools or in other cultures, I think it drives you even more. And um, I think that was the case here. We saw that there's, the kids here realized that, just a, an example, when Grace was in the second grade room and she was going through the flashcards so quickly, and uh, the kids were just impressed by how fast they were, that she did those. A lot of the kids in that classroom weren't nearly at that level, and they looked at Grace and thought, wow, she's really good, and they wanted to do even better, and they wanted to practice more. And I think that's a great example of um, looking at what kids across the world are doing and saying, hey, I'd like to be that good, and 
would even do it, do it better. So kids, American kids going overseas, I think they would have their eyes open and see, wow, um, we think we're dedicated, but I think a lot of other cultures are much more and we could even do better. Can learn from each other. That's right. That's, that's excellent. And uh, I guess as far as an English immersion program, do you feel the kids struggle at all coming here and not being able to speak their native language, a Korean? Do you think, uh, I guess, uh, how, how did they adapt as students came here to America for the first time in an English immersion program and actually were forced to use only English? Did they, uh, did they you know, uh, tra transition well working with other students? I heard very little Korean. I, I could hear them interacting a little bit at recess time or passing in the hallway. They would say a couple things. So, but I never saw any any uneasiness or any uncomfortable parts to that. I, I thought they they realized they were in an English speaking school, and they they were at attention, knowing that they had to speak in English and listen in English as well. And it was it was challenging, I'm sure, for all of them. But I think they handled it well. Cool. And uh, I guess just different age levels, some parents might be worried about sending uh, their younger ones here. Like, I hear that actually in elementary school or elementary uh, age level, K-12, through is a great age where kids really absorb knowledge. You know, do you feel uh, now is the best time to do study abroad or when they're older? Do you think it would be a benefit to do it when you're younger to study abroad? That's a great question. I, I know a lot of the teachers, some of the teachers here were hesitant, especially hearing that a second grader was coming, and even fifth and sixth they were a little little hesitant. I just got through a meeting on Monday with Lakeside Lutheran and they were talking about possibly bringing in Korean students to their high school and one of the questions somebody raised was um, what about being homesick? And I guess they had a student from the Netherlands who did come and he got homesick for the first couple weeks. And Pastor Twight, who's our, one of our pastors here, we were sitting next to each other, and he looked at me and said, with a smile of grace, and we both knew that, to, to know that if a second grader can come, with the confidence that Grace had, even though it was, you know, some days were a challenge for her um, to be away from home, and for all of them, but to have a second grader come here, and to be as brave as she was, and to, to come with a smile, and... I think that's a great aspect of it. I think they would absorb a lot more, and I think they're much more open to meeting new friends and to being um, to meeting other people. Maybe at the high school level, it might be more of a challenge because at that adolescent age, kids might have a harder time connecting with others, and you might feel like an outsider. In a smaller school like this, with where the kids know each other and they're welcoming to others, I think that's a great environment to to start off with. So if the kids can handle it and the parents can, we're all for it. Awesome. And so I know a lot of parents want the best for their kids, so it's preparing them for university, you know, post-secondary education. Do you feel a study abroad program, like coming to Holy Cross Lutheran, is a great way to prepare kids, you know, who uh, might not speak English as a first language to help them prepare for, you know, the next level of education? Do you think the experience here will help them? Sure, because when you go to the next level, sometimes you really don't know what to expect, and you have to pre be prepared for all aspects of what's going to come. And for them to, to come to a new environment, and to a new school, and to a new country, and to adapt, and to, to uh, do your best at whatever comes at you, um, it's a great skill to have, and a lot of kids don't have that. They might come to a difficult situation and not know what to do, and give up, and and want to go back. I think these kids were so brave and and they were so prepared before they came over here that when they arrived here and they, they met the challenges that we had, it was fantastic. So I think later on in their life it's really going to be a blessing to them and a benefit. And uh, I think with our kids too, even at Holy Cross, they're gonna, it, it's going to benefit them because they're going to realize that they see in, in the kids that came over it was a tough thing for them to come over and leave their families and leave their country and come over here. So if they can do it, I can do it too. Excellent. And uh, I guess I have one, one more good question for you. Your experience with Privileged Schools of America and our staff, how was that? It was better than we could have ever imagined. Uh, 
your organization is is fantastic. It's uh, you kept in close contact with us. You communicated very well. To come over and, and discuss the program with us in the beginning was wonderful. It was nothing but positive, and uh, I think you you have a fantastic program, and we were very impressed. And um, it was a blessing for us to have you come and uh, be part of our school. Well, thank you, Mr. Shukagel. I welcome. appreciate it so much for your time. And uh, just moving forward, if there's anything we can do to help you, let us know. But you know, I guess right now, I'd, is there anything that we could do better next time? You could bring more kids. All right. It's on. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're appreciate welcome. it. Anytime. Life's asleep.